Hi, I'm Heimba. Today I want to show you some of the techniques I used with one of my favorite instruments, the Sierra Lombarde Coco Quantos. This is basically a workstation for abstract electronic music. It interfaces with the outside world using piezos and an XLR mic input. It has inputs for stereo mini jack, two of them, so you can use it as a mixer for many signals. And it goes out with a single stereo jack, mini jack also. It consists of the input section, two loopers, which are 8-bit and sound rather crunchy and lo-fi with a lot of noise, but they've got a character that I really enjoy. Amplifiers on the inputs for both the inputs and the loops. And possibilities to change the loops using voltage. For example, playing them in reverse or having them skip back to the start point of the loop. Then you've also got a way to listen to the clock signal of the loop, which sounds rather interesting. And the whole thing can be modulated using the Quantussi section. The Quantussi is five triangle oscillators that can be modulated with each other using the chaos knob. And they have a master pitch. Each oscillator has three different speeds, which you can adjust with these switches, and two different outs. One is sort of stepped and simply and holdish, and the red one is the regular oscillator output. You've got a way to modulate the oscillator using the blue ins, which are for the frequency, and you can change the way they cross modulate by using the green inputs, which results in a nice light show feel. You don't have to use external signals with the Coco Quantus, thanks to the Quantusi. Let me just show you what I mean. For example, I'm taking the oscillator out and put it into an in. I'm adjusting the gain of it. And now I'm putting a second oscillator, also set to the middle, the highest position, and put that in the next input. So now you already have two. Let me check if I'm overdriving. Not yet. Just put a little bit down. So you already got a nice tone going on there. And now you can start cross modulating each other. So you get patterns going on. Even further. It becomes almost distinct musical phrases. Now you can say, oh, I like that phrase. So you want to sample it. Now I have this phrase sampled here, turning the other one down. As you can hear, it adds a lot of noise, but that's part of the character, and I like it. So now let's play the other one, again. Turn up the pitch. Modulation. That could be something interesting, we'll see. Sample that. So now we've got two rhythms going that are happening independently of each other. There are two ways to sync them. One could be 
to give them the same voltage, for example, in the backwards in. And have it step forward and backward at the same tempo. This way you can create slowly stepping drones as it moves through the signal because the clock or the signal that it gets is not always exact. And you can start modulating the loop volume with the same signal right now. Now it gets rhythmical like that, but then you can also do panning effects. You just use the other VCA in, which is inverted. So now they're shaking. Okay. Using the same techniques, not with the internal oscillators, but with an acoustic signal, can be very rewarding. So uh, let me uh, try something with the toy piano that I built underneath here. You can probably see the bars on the video. They're down here. And I'm going to use the piezo mic input that I, because I've got a piezo input installed on the bridge. So now I'm just going to go down a bit with the loop range. As you can see, I've marked octaves, which are always like half, half, half. So. So now we've got a loop, which we can pitch, of course. another note over and maybe add another timbre from the z drax in this case results in this grainy overlay. Very electric sounding. I'm attenuating how much voltage I'm giving the pitch. It sounds nice and rough, not going slower. sort of unstable Bernard Herman Hitchcock style of movement going on. 
as you see, we're only using one channel now. Stereo separation is always left and right with this completely. So now you can try to add a bit more. Toy piano, maybe. Pitch all that down. Maybe pitch the whole thing here all down, too. make it less predictable by using backwards and forwards modulation here. Now some modulation to level. So we always make them come in and out. A better pitch. I would now add some reverb from the Neuen Arbor Slate. play now, I can use the Dolby switches to mute the signal while I'm playing. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to tear off the, uh, turn down the modulation that I have on the loop VCAs. Now when I play, the loop is quiet. Because the Z-Drax also is super stereo, like left on release and uh, left on when you play it and right when you uh, leave the key. That's already some nice soundscape stuff I could use in a movie or something or in a scene that I'm scoring. So, what's also nice is bringing in gear like the Teenage Engineering OP1. That is something that works really well with the Coco Quantos I've found. Let me get it. So, here I've got the Teenage Engineering OP1. I really enjoy the combination of the OP1 and the Coco Quantos because. The inputs on the Coco Quantos overdrive the OP1 nicely and give this little digital sounding synth a nice warm edge. And I really like the noise. So now let's try the pitching thing again.
Now let's modulate the VCAs on the input. With a smooth form. For a nice vibrato effect. Let's pitch everything even further down. This creates a really serene and deep landscape with all soundscape, pardon me, with all the aliasing sounds, beautifully intense. Now it's possible, of course, to modulate, make it always a bit more interesting. This is modulated in a quick tempo. Now a bit slower. Of course, when I add new sounds now, they will also be played in reverse while they are being recorded, which can result in nice different textures that I wouldn't have come with just using my own brain. Usually what I would now do is try to find a melody that fits with this, maybe using the arpeggiator on the OP-1. sample parts of that. And now it would be a good time to give it more space. And if you want, even some shimmer.
this way you can improvise the track really quickly and find your way around it. And the beautiful thing is, once they're that loose of the loopers, they will start to degrade nicely. As the loop gets quieter, it also gets more noisy. Now I'm leaving the reverse modulation away. Just so you can hear more purely, I'm going to fade off the reverb. Because as the signal goes lower, the resolution also goes lower. So it just turns into these grainy pieces of noise that barely resemble the original signal. So, one more thing before I leave you with this. I'm using a Sennheiser MD21 mic because it's an Omni mic, which means it records all around here. And I like that for many different sources. So, and now I'm going to do one of my favorite things, which is make a bass line out of vocals. So. Copy that using this output to here. I record it. It's a massive, beautiful bass line. A bass line yet, just a drone. But of course, using the step modulation. modulated. Now it's just one that's modulated, which creates a nice tension. Try to modulate both. Slightly different ways. I kind of like this actually, because it sounds very organic, yet deep. And now of course you can add movement. But maybe we're going for a smooth movement. I like smooth movement with the CAs. Now we can see what happens if we introduce some of the light show to it. Because that changes how the oscillators interact with each other.
plug in one more. Up the speed. Just for fun. There's stuff here that, for example, if I was working on a score and not recording directly to tape, I would cut up in the DAW and find the best parts and use that as the basis to play the piano over or something. So these are just some basic techniques with the Coco Qantas. Um, there's a whole lot more that I would love to show you, but I haven't got the time. For example, play piano through it. That sounds gorgeous. And when you pitch a piano down, it blows you away. I've got a track on uh, one of my albums called Ashes that opens with just one piano chord into the Coco Qantas and it goes <laughs> and it made me so happy because it was just the second, no, the third track that I made with the Coco Qantas when I got it back two years ago. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, this was actually a viewer request. So if you've got any other things that you would like me to try out, please get in touch. I'm also playing a lot live now and I'm available to be booked. Just get in touch. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.